guys, welcome to Telling the Told and Untold. My name is Tsuhu. Before we go straight into today's case, I do have to give you guys a content warning. In this video, we do talk about its assault. I don't go into any detail, but still, if that's not something you think you're interested in watching, then this video probably isn't for you. So maybe you can watch some of my other videos or just wait for my next upload. On the 16th of March 2023, so a couple of months ago, news broke out on Twitter that a man resembling Tabo Besta was seen shopping at Santon. This was just two months after he had supposedly died in prison. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys about Tabo Besta, his upbringing and his crimes that landed him in prison almost a decade ago. Tabo Besta was born on the 13th of June 1986 at Chris Honey Barra Hospital as Tabo Besta. His mother, Macy Maria Besta, some sources say her surname is Magugula, had him when she was 16 years old as the product of a sexual assault. And when he was around one years old, she sent him to live with her mother because she was constantly working. Tabo is the oldest of four children and his grandparents, Johanna and Abel, worked for the Lowe family for more more than 40 years. They helped raise the Lowe's four children and Tabo spent a lot of time at their family home. The Lowe's had tried helping Tabo however they could. They would help pay for his track suits and traveling expenses to and from school. And at one stage, she had even asked the family to adopt him. Tabo said growing up, he did what he could to survive and he made the best out of a bad situation. He said that he was left to take care of his alcoholic grandmother. However, the Lowe family said that his grandmother didn't drink that much. She only drank on weekends or like special occasions. So she wasn't the alcoholic that Tabo portrayed her to be. The people she worked for helped put him through school, but he had to drop out in grade five. And he says the first time that he was sexually abused was by a man his grandmother had sent to circumcise him. He said that the man didn't do a proper circumcision and only gave him a small little cut. And then after that, he sexually assaulted him. And when he was barely 10 years old, he claimed that he was sexually assaulted by one of his grandmother's friends who apparently kept him locked up behind closed doors for almost a week and would constantly sodomize him and because of this he had to go to hospital for surgery on his rectum. He also claimed that he was molested by various family members and he says by the age of 12 he was fending for himself, he was living on the streets with other runaways and orphans and they would just try and see day to day and just live. A lot of the people that grew up with Tabo say that he's a really good liar and that he grew up extremely fortunate so everything I did tell you is from Tabo so just take it with a grain of salt. From a very young age, Tabo was introduced to the more sophisticated world of fraud and corruption and he was asked by guys to cash fraudulent checks and run other errands for which he was paid for and then eventually in 2009 he was caught and he was sentenced for fraud and he served the sentence under the name Tabo Magugula. Tabo claims that whilst he was in prison, he was gang raped by a group of men and they had put a bottle of sunlight and water into his rectum so that if he was hiding any valuables, they would come out. There are also pictures of Tabo in 2004 when he was 17 being released into the custody of his mother. There have been unconfirmed reports that it was because he scammed UOTV. Once Tabo was released on parole in 2011, his crimes still continued. He started a Facebook account and this is how he he was dubbed the Facebook rapist because he would message girls, he would meet up with them and then he would sexually assault them and then he would rob them. In his Facebook bio he said that he went to school in the free state and that he was currently living in both Cape Town and California but his hometown was in France. So it's a bit confusing. He also claimed that he was an executive producer at SABC3 and that he was shooting a movie. Tabo would also run an elaborate email scam where he would email several women and he would tell them that 
international modeling scouts were looking at them and that they should meet up and he did this under the name Morris Portis as well as Thomas Bester and once they would meet up with the, with these women he would rob them of their cell phones, laptops and any cash that they had on them and it is believed that on a daily basis he would obtain about two to three laptops and that's on like a slow day. There was also another woman who was a model and she had traveled to Durban under the assumption that she was going to be a modeling assistant and once they got to the hotel Tabo tied her up, cut her face and then he stole her laptop and phone. There was another instance where another model who also responded to an internet advert managed to escape while traveling on a bus from Durban to Cape Town with him because her friends told her that she might be with the Facebook rapist. There was another occasion where a 17 year old girl with her two other friends who were all students were approached by Tabo Besta and he told them that he could get them a waitressing job in a club in Johannesburg. So once they met with them, once he met with them, instead of driving them to the said club, he drove them to a construction site where he pointed a gun at them and demanded their phones and money. There was an instance where he was in Cape Town and he had planned to meet up with two women. The first woman, he was supposed to meet with her at Paro Shopping Center, but then he called her and told her that he wouldn't be able to make it and she thought it was a bit strange so she died, so she decided to do some research and and that's when she discovered that she might have been meeting up with the Facebook rapist. So she called the police and police believe that the reason why he cancelled their meeting was because she had showed up with her child and she wasn't alone. There was another case where he was supposed to meet with this woman at the one and only hotel at V&A Waterfront and she grew a bit suspicious so she went to the nearest police station to ask if it might be the same man that they were looking for but they didn't know anything about the case. She then somehow managed to get the numbers of the investigating officer and he told her that it was Tabo Besta, the Facebook rapist and under no circumstances should she meet up with him and it also turned out that this was about like the third woman that he had planned to meet at the one and only hotel and once they looked through CCTV footage they saw that whilst he was walking through this hotel like he had no care in the world he would look at the CCTV camera and like you know almost like taunting the police like look at me like I'm not scared of you. His other crimes in 2011 include him going to a club called Zaw in Greenpoint in Cape Town and he basically told the manager that he was an ANC member and he wanted to book the venue. He said he was planning Mandela's birthday bash and that he wanted their account number so that he could deposit about 40,000 rand into their account but then the manager told him that that's not how it works and then that was the end of it. The guy later realized that Tabo was wanted by police after seeing his photo in a newspaper. There was another time that he wanted about 10 women to do promotional work so they all gathered in front of Zaw, the same club in Greenpoint and they got onto a bus and they drove from Cape Town all the way to Joburg to a and b in Ravonia and once they got there things went a bit sideways and this was because police arrived and this is because the staff realized that Tabo had been there before and he hadn't settled his bill from the last time. So that's why they called police and once Tabo spoke to the police, he was very kind and friendly and told them that it was just a misunderstanding. He also seemed a bit embarrassed. So he paid his 2,000 Rand bill that he owed this BNB and then he told the girls that it was just a huge misunderstanding and that they were going to go to another hotel in Santon. And once they got to the hotel he told the woman that they had to leave all their phones and laptops to be screened for the ANC event the next day like security purposes and then he told the girls that they should just go to a restaurant and that he would join them later and pay for the bill so they should just go there order food order drinks and you'll see them a bit later after the screening and then he told them that there was one woman who was in charge. A couple of hours went by and this is when they realized that Tabo isn't coming coming back and they had this bill that they couldn't afford and once they finally settled that they went back to the hotel room and all their phones and laptops were gone. 
I forgot to mention that Tabo said that he worked for the ANC in communications and this event that these 10 women were going to work at the next day was an ANC function which is why when he said that they had to screen like their phones and laptops they really thought it was just for security purposes since it was a high profile event. A couple of months later in July he convinced a Joburg charter company so private planes you know to collect him and several models in Durban and fly them to a shoot in Cape Town. He had used the name Tom Kelly to book the flight, however his payments failed to clear. Then in September 2011, so two months after the charter incident, he had booked two buses because he said that he was going to have a photo shoot so he also hired a camera crew to like shoot all these photos and he told them that they should leave all their equipment in the buses and that he was going for lunch and one of the camera crew wanted to get his camera and Tom just told him that it would be safer for them to just leave it on the bus and that he'd be back just now and then he left and so did all their equipment. There was another incident where he got 13 models and told them that they were going to be auditioning for a role and he told them that they had to pay first so they first paid him for this role and then he told them that they had to leave their phones and laptops in a hotel room similar to the last thing that he did and told them that they had to screen it for security purposes and then he left with all their phones and all their laptops and he was never seen again. In the same month, the body of 26-year-old Nomfundo Chulo was found in a room in a BNB in Cape Town. According to Tabo, the two of them had met in January, so about nine months earlier, at BMW in Santon. And this is because Nomfundo worked at BMW and at the same time, Tabo went there so that he could buy the new BMW 1 series. And he said once they saw each other and they started speaking, there was like... A mutual attraction they really liked each other the only problem was that she lived in Joburg and he lived in Durban but they still continued like an intimate relationship it was kind of like long distance they would talk all the time on the phone like literally every single day phone calls SMS's and then in September she called him to let him know that she had found a new job so she had some free time before she started this new job so then he decided to fly her down to Durban on the 16th of September and then a couple of days later on the 19th of September they then flew down to Cape Town where they stayed at the BNB. He then says in the evening on the 21st of September or the early hours of the 22nd of September the two of them had an argument because Nomfundo thought that they were seeing each other like boyfriend girlfriend and for Tabo that wasn't the case he was just like having fun with her but she really wanted a committed relationship so they had an argument about this and then after that they went to bed and then he said he woke up in the early hours of the morning, around 2 a.m., he went to the kitchen and he grabbed a knife. And he grabbed this knife because he wanted to steal her phone and her laptop and kind of just fade away into the night. You know, like when she woke up, then he's not there and her stuff isn't there either. And then he said he went back to the room, went back to the bed and she was awake and she saw the knife and then the two of them started fighting over the knife. Someone like literally someone just trying to get the knife. And then in the midst of all of this chaos, he stabbed her in the chest. He said that after he stabbed her in the chest, she was lying face down on the bed and she wasn't moving. He then decided to tie her hands together, like behind her back. And then he was asking her for her laptop's password, but she wasn't responding. And then a couple of hours later, at around seven in the morning, he went to the owner of this BNB and he asked the owner to please drop him off in central Cape Town or CBD Cape Town. And he told them that they shouldn't wake Nomfundo up because she was sleeping and they can try to wake her up after 2 p.m. The owner then dropped Tabo off and then he went back to the BNB and just continued on with his day. And hours literally went by and now it was around 9 p.m. and he realized that Nomfundo still hadn't come out 
of the room and this is when he decided to go check on her and once he opened the door this is when he found her bloodied body they immediately called police and once police arrived the first thing that they thought they thought that it was the facebook rapist and this was because Apparently someone had said that Nomfundo had been promised a modeling job in both Cape Town and Durban by someone who resembled Tabo Besta and some sources say that Tabo and Nomfundo were together and they were in a relationship but other sources say that she just fell victim to him because he had promised her a modeling opportunity. Because all of this was happening, the Hawks then announced that they were looking for Tabo Besta in connection to more than 30 cases, including rape, theft, robbery, kidnapping, and fraud. They also discovered his many Facebook accounts, and all of them had different aliases, and his aliases included Thomas Besta, Tom Besta, Tabo Tom Besta, Tom Kelly, Thomas Kelly Besta, Thomas Beta, TK, Thomas Kelly Young, Thomas Magugula, Tabo Magugula, Kelly Johnstone, Rufus Mahopo, and Tom Rufus Reddy. Because officers had found some of his aliases on Facebook, police then decided that they were going to target him through social media. So they were going to create profiles of young women, like young women as a profile picture, and then try and lure Tabo Besta out so that they would finally be able to arrest him. And things were going really well until the media broke the news about what police were planning to do. And obviously Tabo saw this, and because of this, he had canceled all of his meetups. Whether it was all his meetups was just the police, or like all of them in general with all the women that he had been speaking to, he canceled all of them. So police's best lead was just gone like that. They also tried to trace his cell phone number, but he had over a hundred SIM cards. So they literally couldn't pinpoint which one he was using at the time. So that just proved to be another challenge on its own. On the 5th of October, 2011, police officers received a phone call that a man had kidnapped a woman. It was a completely different case. It had nothing to do with Tabo Besta, and they managed to track down both this woman and the man who had kidnapped her. This happened in Alberton and then he appeared in court and two days after he had been arrested, he called one of the investigating officers into the Facebook rapist and this is when he told them that he had been arrested and this is how they discovered that they had actually arrested Tabo Besta, one of South Africa's most wanted men at the time. Turned out that four days before his arrest, on one of his many Facebook accounts, the one under Tom Kelly, he had written a post. I'm going to read it to you word for word. I'll also put it on the screen so you can read along with me. The English is a bit dizzy, but I think we'll understand. He said, the story running up and down in SA, but one point and I have won. FB account, all the account that you run your story on is not my. I have the get laptop and things for models, but have not kill or rap in my dog life. So sorry for the bad one is done. I don't know what he's trying to say. I think he's just trying to say like all the stories about him and like stealing and stuff isn't true and he's never killed anyone. That's basically what he was trying to say. But you know, that English not making sense. <laughs> After his arrest, Tabo Besta spoke to, if I'm not mistaken, Kharat Labaskatni, who is a profiler in South Africa. And during this interview slash confession, he spoke about sexual assaulting two girls and as and also killing Nomfundo. I'll try and insert some clips where I can because you know copyright. But then there's one point in the video where he says, I'm sure if I wanted to kill her, I could have. I'm not a stupid person. I could have done it in the way that the cops wouldn't even know it was me. The rapes happened in a way that I did not know I was doing rape until I left the premises. Because if I knew I was doing rape, I could have covered myself by using certain methods so that my fingerprints were not there. So it only became known to me that it was rape when I left. I'll put the link to the full confession in the description box below. Finally, in October 2011, Tabo Besta was found 
guilty for the rape of two women and sentenced to 50 years imprisonment. The following year, on the 13th of August 2012, he entered into a plea agreement with the state for the murder of Nofuna Chula. And then on the 16th of August 2012, he was convicted and sentenced to life and 25 years for murder and aggravated robbery of Nofuna. It was after he had been convicted of murder that he finally spoke pub publicly about Nomfundo's murder and he apologized and he basically said that he's sorry for all the sins in his life and he's sorry to Nomfundo's family for the pain that he put them through and he just robbed her because he needed money to support his three children. He also said if I was not in her life she would be with us today. Yes I got a life sentence but it will not give us Nomfundo. He also told them that during his, because he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life, he had turned to God, he was a Christian, he was going to church, and he was reading the Bible. Then things regarding Tabo Besta and the Facebook rapist went quiet for years until May 2022 when news broke out that Tawo had burned to death in his cell at the Mangun Correctional Center, which is one of the two private prisons in South Africa. It's said that he was in solitary confinement from the 29th of April and he had pleaded that he wanted to be out of solitary confinement and just be with the rest, like be with everyone else, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. And then four days after this, he was found burnt to ashes in the early hours of the morning. And he had apparently set himself alight and was found with both a cell phone and a laptop in his cell. It said that he was seen the night before around 10 p.m. before the guard switched off all the lights and when he was found there was a mattress on top of him that had been completely burnt and his body had also been burnt beyond recognition. Then almost a year later on the 16th of March 2023 pictures surfaced on Twitter of Tabo Besta shopping at Woolworths with a celebrity famous doctor and the pictures were taken on the 30th of June 2022 so two months after he supposedly died in his prison cell and the photos show him with long hair wearing a tracksuit and sunglasses. People started speculating about whether Tabo Besta was alive and well and whether he had escaped prison and this prompted the police to look into it and start investigating his apparent suicide in prison. Post-mortem conducted on the body that was found in his cell revealed that it was an adult male with blunt force trauma to his head and the post-mortem report also revealed that there was no smoke found in the body. They also did a DNA test. They took his mother's DNA and they also compared it to the body that they had found in the cell and it confirmed that the body that was found in cell 35 did not belong to Tabo Besta. And because of this, the department's investigation concluded that Tabo Besta had escaped from prison custody on the 3rd of May 2022. In all of this, I think it's important for us to remember Nomfundo, who was only 26 years old when she lost her life. She was described as a lovely and energetic woman who had a contagious smile and a warm heart. Her life was cut short before she could attain her full potential. And that's it for today's case. Obviously this case is still ongoing and there are new developments almost every single day. So if you guys want a deep dive into Tabo Besta, Dr. Nandi and their escape and 
everything really please just let me know in the comments and we can revisit it once the trial has concluded thank you guys so so much for watching please don't forget to comment like subscribe it really means a lot and helps my channel so much and yeah i'll see you guys next time bye